Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's take a look at creative ways to use shapes in Mac apps. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now the Mac apps pages, keynote, and numbers come with a large selection of shapes that you can use. They seem pretty basic at first. These are single color shapes that you could use as you want in your documents and it doesn't seem like you could do too much of them other than adding an occasional piece of clip art. But here are all sorts of different ideas for getting extra creative with these shapes. So I'm going to use pages here to demonstrate but you could do the same thing in Keynote and Numbers and these are particularly useful in Keynote when making presentations. So you can go to Shape and then select a shape here. You can also search at the top. So you can grab a basic shape or go down into one of these categories or just scroll through them all. Let's start by taking a basic shape like a square like this and we've got this basic square. We can drag it and move it around. We can grab a corner or a side and resize it and you can see this is actually a rectangle. We can drag it in any direction we want. But you could also edit the actual lines and points that make up this shape. To do that with the shape selected go to Format and then Shapes and Lines and then Make Editable. You could also control click, right click, or two finger click with the trackpad on the shape and use Make Editable there. Now when I do that I can see those four points here. I can grab one and you can see I can change the shape completely by moving these points. Now when you move your pointer over one of the sides notice these dots appear here. You could grab those and drag those to create a new point. So now I have five points instead of four. Notice how this point creates a curve. You could switch between a curved point and a straight point by double clicking. So now it's a square there indicating this is a point with straight lines coming out of it. Double clicking again indicates a point with curves coming out of it. There are actually three types of points. Double clicking switches between two of them but if you control click on a point you can go between those two and the Bezier point which you're probably familiar with if you use apps like Adobe Illustrator. Now you can grab these handles to adjust the curve coming out of the point for ultimate control of exactly how the line is drawn. Here are a few other tips for using these points. If you make something editable not only can you grab a single point but you can shift click to grab two points. See how these two are selected and these two are not. Now if I drag either one of these two points it drags both at the same time making it easy to do things like extend a shape. You also can use the Shift key when dragging a point. Notice if I do it with this point here if I drag normally I can drag it anywhere I want. Holding the Shift key down locks this to vertical or horizontal so you can see how I can make this side here nice and even or this side nice and even. But also you can go to 45 degree angles. You can also delete any point by selecting it and then hitting the Delete key on your keyboard. So you can get rid of one of those turning a rectangle into a triangle or if you select a more complex shape you can get rid of things entirely. For instance I can go and take these cherries here, make these editable and then I can drag around and select a whole bunch of points like that. Shift drag to select even more. Hit the Delete key and now I've got just one cherry from that shape. So you can also create lines. The way to do that is go to Basic and the first three up here are lines. They're actually pretty much the same thing just different starting points. Let's start with a line right here and I can grab any end to move it around just like with the rectangle. But I could also Control click on the shape and choose Make Editable and now I'm actually editing the points and I can add new ones. So you can see I can drag that out in a curve. I can double click to change that to a straight line. I can keep adding points like this. You could also go over here to Styles and change things about the line like for instance the endpoints. So you could add an arrow onto the end or some other type of endpoint as well. You can change the thickness of the line. This works for regular shapes as well as lines. You can change the color. You can also change the type of line here. You can see you can have a dotted line. You can have dashed lines. You can have lines that look like they're drawn like that. Now in addition to drawing lines like that you can also draw shapes. So you can go here to this tool which is kind of hidden in the upper right hand corner and easy to miss. Now you're actually drawing a shape. You can continue to click on different points and you can go back to the original point right here and select that and it finishes the shape. You can continue to edit it just like a regular shape. 
You could change it to be a fill by selecting over here from no fill to color fill like that. And then you've got your own shape here that you could use just like any one of these shapes. Now sometimes shapes have multiple parts. Let's go over here to Ornaments and for instance let's take a look at this shape here. And You've got all these different parts here. One of the disadvantages to a shape is it can only be one color. So I can change the color of this and it changes it all. But I could also go to Format and then Shapes and Lines and then Break Apart. And If a shape is made up of multiple independent pieces like this one then each one becomes its own shape. Now I can select each one and I can select a color and change the color for every single one of these to something different. Now you can also group shapes together and you can do that one of two ways. The first one I'm going to show you now and the second one later on. So let's go to Objects here and select a shirt. And Now let's say I want to put a logo on the shirt. So let's go to Shape here and go to Arts and then select say this right here. And let's change the color to something else like that and put it on the shirt. Now it looks good except that these are now still separate items. I can select both of them by dragging around it or selecting one and shift clicking the other. And instead of altering anything to do with the shapes I can simply group them together. That's something you can do with any objects in Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. And now it's treated as one object. So I can move it around, place it where I want. If I want to resize it they resize together. And I could also edit them individually by double clicking to go inside the group. And Now I can select the individual pieces here. As soon as I select Outside they're in a group together again like that. But I can go and change them individually and do things with them and then they're back in that group as soon as I select Outside. Now having a single color for a shape can be kind of boring. But you can do some really cool things using different types of fills. Let's say let's fill that with a green color. But we can make that more interesting by actually using a gradient fill. An advanced gradient fill will allow us to actually do things like radial. So now I have a center point there that I can move around. Let's change this first point here to a light green and this last point here to a darker green. And then we can grab this little green dot here to adjust the radial fill to kind of give it a 3D effect like that. You do a lot more with fills as well. We can go to Advanced Gradient Fill and let's do it as lines like that. And we can change this color here to something. And then we can add another point right there and change it to something else. And another point to something else. And kind of create like a tie dye look. We could go and change that to radial like that. And we can also change this to an image fill. And then we could drag an image into this spot here. So I'm going to grab a JPEG image, drag it in here. And now you can see how I've filled this shirt with a image. So you can really do anything with this. You can also go to Advanced Image Fill which will tint the image with a color. Also don't overlook the use of borders to make your shapes unique. Let's select a heart right here and let's say it's fill it with red. But let's add a border to it. So I'm going to do a line border and I'm going to make it thicker but it's still pretty boring. But if I switch to a different type of line like this it makes it a lot more interesting. We could also go to Arrange here and rotate this like that. and That creates a much more unique shape than the standard one. Shadows are another thing you can use. Turn that on by going down into here and there are several different types of shadows. You've got your standard drop shadow. and Let's make that a little bit more opaque right there. and Then you can set the offset for it and the angle at which the offset occurs. But you could also just turn the offset to nothing to have it directly behind the object. You can increase the blur like that. You could make the object kind of disappear by making it the same color as the background. And then you kind of have this stencil effect right here. You can kind of add to that a little bit with the border, giving a simple line border like this, and bring it all the way down to a quarter of a point like that. And these borders don't have to be black. You can change them to any color you want. For some sort of effect like that. Now there are two other types. One of them is called the contact shadow, which is kind of a 3D effect. It puts a shadow at the bottom as if this is an object sticking up out of the ground. So you can make that a little bit darker there, 
change the blur. It looks like that tree is kind of standing on a piece of land. You even can change the perspective amount like that. The other type of shadow is called a curved shadow which to me makes it look like a piece of paper kind of pasted on to your page. Another interesting thing you can do is you can have text inside of a shape. So you can just type inside of any shape and it treats it like a box. So for instance I could paste in a bunch of words here like this and you can see how it fills out the shape. Let's try something. Let's change the font color here to black and let's change the shape so that it's either white or has no fill. Let's just do no fill right there. Now you can see how the words take on the shape. It doesn't work that great when the words are big so let's go and select all the words and make it a much smaller font size like that. I'm going to then copy and paste it a bunch of times so it fills out the shape. To make it even better go into text here. Go into layout and then change the text inset to nothing so it goes right up to the edges. So now it really fills out the shape. The smaller you make the text the better it's going to be but the more text you're going to need to fill it out like that. Now you can actually fill text if you go into Format Text and then under Fill here instead of Text Color you change it to a fill. You can do gradients and all sorts of things including an image fill. So we can drag in that sunset picture here and you can see the sunset is now filling in just for the text. Now let's get back to editing shapes. You can take a basic shape like say a square and another shape like a circle and combine them in a number of ways. The most interesting way is to actually subtract them. Let's make sure we can see each shape here so I'll change one of the colors. So the circle is on top of the block here. Let's go and select both of them. I'm going to shift click to do that. Then go to Format, Shapes and Lines and Subtract Shapes and it's going to cut out the top shape from the bottom one. If I make this editable you can see that it is now just one shape that has been designed around those two. So you could go to something like the t-shirt here and then you could add another shape to it like let's say the apple there and I could cut this shape out of the shirt by selecting both, Shapes and Lines, Subtract Shapes and now this is just one regular shape with a hole cut out of it. You could also combine shapes. So for instance there's some frames in here. Let's grab this frame and let's say we want to put something inside of that and we'll place the apple inside of here. So we could actually combine these both selecting them, going Format, Shapes and Lines and then Unite Shapes. And now this is one shape with both as part of it. We can edit the shape and see all the points there. So when you have a shape like that using two or more with Subtract or two or more with Unite or you've drawn a new shape like I've shown before you could actually select the shape, go to Format, Shapes and Lines and then Save to My Shapes. When you do that you get an added shape here at the bottom. See underneath Ornaments here there's called My Shapes that will appear once you've started to create your own. And you can call this what you want. So Framed Apple. This is useful if you want to search for it later on. And now I can drag this shape here anytime I want and add a new one and it will appear no matter what document I'm editing. I'll even see it in Numbers and Keynote as well. When you go into Shapes, My Shapes here you can always Control click on anything, rename it or delete it. If you ever want to modify it the only way to do that is to actually put one here, go in, make it editable or Use Unite, Use Subtract, whatever you're going to do. Create a new shape, save the new shape and delete the old one. So here's one bonus one that you can only do in Keynote because Keynote is the only one of those apps that you can actually animate things. If you create a shape like this on a slide in Keynote and then take away the fill, so there's no fill, add instead a border like that. Then you can go to Animate and then for the Build In Animation you get a special line draw that doesn't appear for images and text and other things. And you can see how it draws the shape like that. You have a lot of options here like how long it takes, whether to draw clockwise or counterclockwise, to ease in, ease out or just do a linear draw like that. And you could add that in as an effect as the slides build. This is a very underused Keynote build. You don't see it in many presentations so using it in yours would make it pretty unique. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. 
I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.